It starts with a whistle and ends with a gun. 60 minutes of close in action from kickoff to touchdown. This is pro football, the sport of our time. The men who play it are the best there are. Disciplined professionals who perform on a stage 100 yards long. For the audience crowding the stands, the drama begins with a slap of leather in the song of Men in Motion. But for 1,500 professional football players, it begins in the relentless heat of midsummer. 1529, even. Improve day by day by day, and all of a sudden you're a lot better. And if you want a job now, you gotta work hard. <laughs> Keep him in front! Keep him in front! Snap that back! Snap that back! Come on! Who the hell is it? Who the hell is it? The screen is like Novocaine. You gotta wait and let it take effect. See? Let it go! Let it go! Let it See, the teasing is over. That second move, boy, get going back because you released the ball. Green Bay is home team, love visiting team. You call it and it's up in the air. Eleven trained men face to face on the field of play. Each man a specialist, but one man stands above the rest. He occupies the most critical position in the game. He is the quarterback. He plots, directs, and executes the on-field fortunes of his team. The quarterback lives in a world of pressure. How well he lives with it and reacts to it determines how good he is. He must have a cool disregard for danger and the courage to take punishment. quarterback has two formidable allies. One is deception. By clever faking, he can confuse the defense and open a clear path for the play. His second ally is the forward pass. It's a long bomb a screen pass over charging linemen. A bullet from the midst of a traffic jam. The pass in the hands of a pro quarterback is a bolt of lightning that can strike anywhere, anytime. Each quarterback in the NFL has his own particular style. There's Fran talking who seeded the word scramble into the vocabulary of pro football. He may pass, run, or just drop back 20 or 30 yards before he makes up his mind. Sonny Jergeson of the Washington Redskins, a whiplash passer whose rifle arm can put the ball anywhere on the field. Jergeson is considered the finest Redskin quarterback since the Sime Barr era. John Unitas of the Baltimore Colts, a classic quarterback whose timing and control is cool, swift, and precise. Unitas, a fierce competitor with a flair for surprises.
Bart Starr, the Green Bay Packers, a careful field general as well as an exponent of a calculated risk. He has guided his team to four world championships. Second only in importance to the mind and arm of the quarterback is the instinct and legs of the runners. Give me 18 inches of daylight. That's all I need. When Gale Sayers gets those 18 inches of daylight, the Chicago Bears usually win. When he doesn't, they don't. It's as simple as that. Sayers, the halfback, the whirlwind runner that comes along once in a generation. He's an attack all by himself, a spinning, dancing dervish. Halfback, the runner with speed and breakaway ability. Every team in the NFL that boasts a balanced attack has a phantom flyer in its lineup. The power gear in the offensive machine is the fullback. We tell our ball carrier to come across hard and fast till he gets the ball. Once he gets it, to come under control and button hook slightly. Key to block on the linebacker or key the block of the YN. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. Jim Taylor, number 31, is a fullback and this is the way of fullbacks. is the prime requisite. Quickness, an asset. The approach is not subtle. The yards he gains, the toughest. These are the runners, the racehorse halfbacks and locomotive fullbacks. Theirs is the speed and the fury, and to them must go the glory. This yard of space is called no man's land. Football games are won or lost by control of this narrow strip of land. The battle for it is a violent one. The hands of combat. The hands of pros. This is the part of the game rarely seen by the spectator. The shattering impact of a block. The mountainous size of an onrushing defender. The splintering force of a far-arm shiver. One ton of muscle with a one-track mind. Down in the dirt, the lair of the lineman. This is where the game is played. 
the fringe of no man's land is patrolled by the linebackers. The search and destroy men of the defense. Number 50, search and destroy. Number 58, search and destroy. Sunday after Sunday, pro quarterbacks have learned that whatever play they call, a linebacker is likely to meet it head on. This is the face of the tiger. And this, the action of the tiger. Linebackers provide the defense with enormous flexibility. They can charge through the line into the enemy backfield or slide laterally against plays to the outside. Roving far from the ruck of the scrimmage line is the pass receiver. His range carries him into heavy traffic or through the shifting dangers of a broken field. The pass catches of pro football's men on the run, measuring their survival by the twist of a shoulder. A head fake. The burning speed that cuts them free. The philosophy of successful pass receiving is simple. Be alone when the ball arrives. But with a big tight end like John Mackey, number 88, it doesn't make any difference. and disciplined patterns of Raymond Berry, number 82, have made him the most proficient pass catcher in history. The rapport that exists between a gifted passer and his favorite receiver is part instinct, part practice, and part luck. the hands, the moves, the grace, and a willing disregard for the consequences. receiver is the defensive back. One man alone facing another man alone. A man whose skill and wits he knows and fears but must cancel. His directive, stop the play. Guess and gamble but don't fail. They're the last line of the defense. They 
they pick up the pieces that the line and linebackers let through. For the defensive back, the glory is great. Are the disgrace absolute? For others, there is anger, despair, exultation, moments of emotion that pierce the frenzy of play to reveal the man behind the uniform. So they call it pro football. They play it under the autumn moon and the heat of a Texas afternoon. In the ice bucket chill of a Wisconsin winter. In the snow, fog, and wind. And thousands come to watch or sleep to cheer or stand in silent adulation. And millions more sit at home before TV sets, pursuing the elusive magic of the golden game. All right, 60 on four and the ISO. Very good. Ready, one, one. If, if I anticipate a dog and I go uh, round right 83, that's uh, Gary on the quick post. Yeah. Have him do an X V out, quick V out, rather than the post. Okay, Don. It'll be still a dog pass, but tell him not to take a half hour to make the V out. Well, don't take a half hour to make the V out either. That's the official time. Tell him about it. Tell him on the short yard he's gonna go ahead and hit some. And if he stays out, go ahead and run a shoot. If he goes out, if I run up. You think you would hit that fast? Timmy, go in the next play and tell him to remember to stutter pass, break right. Now, if shitty comes, block him in, you got it? Hey, listen, tell, tell Mel the next time on that Taylor now, he knows he's going for a turn in for the pick, so he wants to be ready to come across it. Okay. Mel! Let's go, let's go. Right, right now. Time well, you can't let's release go. inside and Mike dropped off, so I figured it was a... We were playing it. All right, all right. Oh, boy, here. Hey, hey, you just five, told him about okay. that great play. Gears in that guy's mind didn't mesh for a long time, I'll tell you that. You gotta have more conviction than that! Pretty slow decision, Stan! Pretty slow decision! The ball hits the ground and bounce and he comes in, it's too late! Come on, come on, turn the car, turn the car, turn the car, turn the car! Down by two feet, two feet. He's got it easy. He's got it easy. I can't see. Oh, the thing is way over here. He's got it by a two feet. Look at that now. See how your eyes work? Foot, you foot. said two feet. All right, well, what's the difference between eight inches and two feet? Five and a half inches. Eight inches. A call. The ball is snapped and the play continues. A drum of man on man in a race against the clock. It's precision, persistence, power. The unleashed speed of the kickoff, the whistling feet of a great runner, the reckless fury of a goal line stand, the crowning glory of a winning touchdown, the swelling roar of the crowd. It's called pro football.
January 15, 1967, on a bright, clear day in the Los Angeles Coliseum, the big question which had troubled the football world for seven years was answered. For the first time, the Green Bay Packers, champions of the National Football League, played the Kansas City Chiefs, the best team in the American Football League. The game was the first concrete evidence of the merger of the two leagues, and it was played for the highest stakes ever, $15,000 per man for the winning players. The Super Bowl was seen by the largest sports audience in the history of television. 65 million people watching the broadcast on two networks. Football line up here. Got to take it down, fella. Okay. Yeah, I get that starting line up here. Get a program. Football line up here. Yeah, you line up today. This premier spectacle of sport took place in the carnival atmosphere appropriate to the Hollywood setting. Yeah, official program. Line up today, boys. Line up here. Get them early, boys. Got to sell out today. call of the Kansas City trumpeter went unanswered. Throughout the entire game, the Kansas City runners were hauled down at the line of scrimmage as the big mobile Green Bay defenders overpowered the blockers. It was established early that the Chiefs could not move the ball consistently on the ground. They were to gain only 72 yards rushing. Most of this yardage was born from desperation as Len Dawson scrambled to avoid Green Bay tacklers. This, of course, is a sign of weakness, not of strength. With their ground game choked off, the Chiefs took to the air. 
During the second quarter, they surprised the Green Bay defense with accurate passing, which elusive Mike Garrett made even more effective. The play-action pass was quarterback Len Dawson's most useful weapon. It was a play-action pass which fooled Green Bay and gave Kansas City its longest gain of the day. It's Dawson to Otis Taylor for 31 yards. The fullback's fake is the key to the play-action pass. When the Green Bay defense honors the fake, it must sacrifice the pass rush. With no pressure on him, Dawson has ample time to find a receiver. The receiver, in turn, has time to break free. Another play-action pass. Dawson to Curtis McClinton gives Kansas City its only touchdown. In super slow motion, we see the Green Bay defense sucked in by the play-action fake. The fake is so convincing that Dawson has his choice of two receivers. Cornerback Bob Jeter goes over his assignment as Green Bay adjusts to contain the play-action pass. Yeah, that's why I said he come outside. If he comes out easy, I'm going to lose the tight end. I'm forced. The tight end blocks, I come up. Now, if he came inside, I'm going to lose him, you, every time. I just have to lay back here. Now the Green Bay defense ignores the faking backs to concentrate on Dawson. In the second half, the Packers begin to blitz to put even more pressure on Dawson. Number 60, Leroy Caffey, finds an open road to the quarterback. The Green Bay front four is relentless. Dawson learns the hard way what NFL quarterbacks have known for years. Kansas City discovers that against Green Bay, success invites punishment. As the pass rush hurries Dawson, the task of the Green Bay defensive backs becomes easier. All pro Herb Adderley, aware that the rush has diminished the threat of the bomb, concentrates on denying the short pass. With his receivers covered short and long, Dawson tries to stall the rush with a screen pass, which dies on the long reach of Bob Brown. As the Kansas City offense consistently comes up short, frustrated coach Hank Stram ponders an impossible problem. Pro football games are won and lost on third down, for Kansas City, it's now third and 11. This is the play Dawson must make to keep the Chiefs alive. Dawson completes his pass to Reg Carolyn, but Ray Nitschke stops the play four yards short of the first down. As the Chiefs founder on the rocky Green Bay defense, they try to salvage what they can with a field goal attempt. But even that fails, and the missed third down has cost them possession of the ball. It is the third down play which separates the great quarterback from the average. The great ones convert third down into first. For Dawson, it's third and ten. 
he completes a screen pass to Garrett into the thick of the Green Bay defense and the play gains only eight yards. Let's go, Lord! Let's go! But the Chiefs go for the field goal instead. Mike Mercer brings the Kansas City point total to 10, but the Chiefs will score no more this afternoon. Most third down failures force the team to kick. This third down failure forced the Chiefs out of their game plan into a hopeless game of catch up. Willie Wood's 50 yard return strikes deep into the Kansas City heartland. This fatal third down failure was the child of frustration. Dawson, under brutal pressure from a Packer blitz, lobs a weak pass over the on-rushing defenders. With nothing on it, the ball flutters into the hands of Wood. If there was one play upon which the game turned, this was it. Overmatched as a team, some Kansas City players still had their moments. Number 55, E.J. Holub, shows unusual speed for a linebacker as he runs step for step with Jim Taylor to stop a sweep. The left side linebacker, powerful Bobby Bell, demonstrates his strength and agility as he fights off a block to make this tackle. In the circle, tackle Buck Buchanan knocked back two steps at the moment of impact, still with persistence and good pursuit, manages to wrestle Jim Taylor to the ground. Four times in the course of the game, Dawson did throw the ball to Otis Taylor, but it was far from enough. The timing was faulty on Dawson's first two passes to Chris Burford, his other top receiver. Both balls were caught dramatically, but out of bounds. However, Burford is a fine end. He caught four passes for 67 yards to lead the Kansas City receivers. Mercury quick Mike Garrett gave American Football League fans cause for pride. Garrett was one of the best backs on the field. When they did give the ball to Garrett, he brought the fans to their feet with skittering stop and go runs through the Green Bay defense. A beautifully balanced runner, Garrett time and again slipped tackles to gain additional yardage. Mike Garrett is a complete player. He blocks. His fakes were so convincing, but often he was tackled when he did not have the ball. And when his quarterback is in a hole, Garrett lends a helping hand.
Above all, though, Mike Garrett is a great natural runner. Kansas City did have some stars, but Green Bay was a team of stars. On the third play of the game, Green Bay lost one of its stars when Boyd Dowler suffered a separated shoulder. He was replaced by 34-year-old Max McGee, the unlikeliest star of the afternoon. McGee fielded his first pass like Willie Mays and went on from there. McGee's catch is even more startling in super slow motion and it was a portent of things to come. The crafty Green Bay veteran used his 11 years of NFL experience over and over to take advantage of the young Kansas City cornerbacks. He beat Willie Mitchell to the outside. He beat Mitchell to the inside. When the desperate Chiefs resorted to double coverage, McGee beat both defenders. Although he had caught only four passes during the entire NFL season, on this vital afternoon, McGee caught seven passes for 138 yards and two touchdowns. He demoralized the Kansas City secondary. What a day! <laughs> Carol Dale, the Packers' other wide receiver, also found Kansas City's stacked defense an invitation to success. Dale gratefully accepted the short passes conceded by Mitchell, who was deathly afraid of the bomb. 